Hey guys, what's up? Scott Devine here from Scott's Bass Lessons. Hopefully you're having a wicked day out there. And no, we are not going to be learning about how to solo like that right now, but we are going to be learning how to play walking bass lines. And for me, the information that you need to be able to solo is just so connected with walking bass lines. It's like playing walking bass lines is that first step, and then the next step is soloing. So it's really, really related. To do one thing, you need to be able to do the other. So before I get into telling you the specific formula to get you started with walking bass lines, um, I really want to highlight how important they really are because our job as a bass player is to outline the chords in a linear way. If the band are playing C minor seven, right, the guitar player, they're doing their thing. The keys player, they're doing their thing. Well, as bass players, we're doing our thing. Okay, we need to be able to do the same thing. All I was doing there is playing the chord tones that are included in this chord to create a cool bass line. We add a bit of rhythm, Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. Now the first thing when it comes to walking bass lines is we need to apply it to a chord sequence. This isn't a free for all, right? And this is why they're so good. So the chord sequence we're gonna use is C minor seven to F dominant seven to B flat major seven, that little triangle there. It just means major seven, and then we've got a G dominant seven there, okay? Now, for anybody that knows the, you know, knows a little bit about theory, you'll know that that is a two, five, one, six, okay? And yes, before anybody shouted out, this six, I've, you know, I've made it a, a subdominant, right? I've made it into a dominant because it's just so, um, useful and it sounds great as it comes back to that two chord. It gives that that five to one sound. It sounds like this. Hey, how good that G7 sounds going to that C minor seven. Okay, so that's the simple chord sequence you're gonna use. Always when you're working out you know, and you're practicing your walking bass lines, always use it on a chord sequence. So first thing is you wanna start with roots. You wanna be able to play roots. So roots only in fact, because if you don't know where the roots are, you're stuffed. You're not gonna be able to play a walking bass line. If you're looking down here and you're thinking, where's a C, uh, where's an F? You know, you're dead already. So, roots first. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull up a little track here. There's actually, I think, five, there's five points I wanna make here. And I, there's a really cool formula I wanna show you as well. But if I just put a basic jazz pattern on, 120 20 BPM. Okay, and if anybody's wondering, I'm just using the Groove Trainer within scottsbasslessons.com. It's like a little drum machine that you can use. If you remember, you hit yourself up with it. If not, go check out scottsbasslessons.com. I'll put a link below. Now, roots. So all we want to do is, first of all, find where the measure is. Two, three, four, a one, 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 two, three. Here we go. You need to be able to find your roots first, right? Once you've found your roots, now you need to find your roots and your fifths. Okay, a one, two, uh, two, three, four. Now just to show you how much you can push it with just roots and fifths, 
I can actually play a great walking bass line just with roots and fifths around this chord sequence. So if you want to do that, you know, go for it. I'm just going to give you a little example of it now for a few bars, just so you can get a feel. Because one of the main things or hurdles that bass players seem to hit all the time is trying to just do too much and overcomplicate it. You don't need to overcomplicate it, okay? So just roots and fifths. Let's do it four in a bar. Get a feel for it. Two, three, a four. Now I'm not adding any chromatic notes in or any of that fancy stuff. Yeah, we're going to get to that. Now another really important thing to do is roots and thirds. And again, the great thing about this is you can either do it or you can't do it. It's a, a little bit, technique sometimes is ambiguous, right? You see somebody with blazing technique and it's just like, well, they've got blazing technique. But this is actually like really simple. We can all play this fast, right? Like, damn, my little, you know, five-year-old boy could probably play this fast, even though he doesn't play bass, but you know what I mean. Right, it's really simple to play that fast. So it actually comes to, do you know your fingerboard or not? Because if you don't, you need to, right? So we can play roots and thirds, do the same thing. One, two, uh, two, three, four. them thirds are below as well. Okay, so once you've got the roots, the roots fifths and the roots and thirds down, then it's time, time to start mixing this up. And I want to tell you a formula, but before I tell you this formula, which is called, I like to call it root, or R plus three plus five plus C equals awesome. <laughs> right. Awesome walking lines. Walking <laughs> lines. And before I get on to this and tell you what this, um, this formula is about, I should also say that we have co-created a walking bass lines course with Ed Friedland, who is, you know, probably the most um, published bass author on the planet. He was who, it's who I learned walking bass lines from. So we've co-created this awesome walking bass lines course, but enrollment closes for it in a few days time. If you want to check out the course, I'll put the link below. It'll say Ed Friedland course or something like that. Go check it out. It's amazing. On top of the course as well, we're giving away something like 11 hours worth of bonus material of calls with Ed and calls with me talking all about walking bass lines and how to take your bass playing to the next level. So if you haven't checked that out, link is below. Again, enrollment closes in well, it depends when you're watching this. If you're watching it on the day, it'll be like in two days' time, but you know, you might be watching this after the fact. If it is, what we'll do is put a wait list up so you can get notified next time. Anyway, link is below. Now, this formula here, okay? So root plus third plus fifth plus a chromatic note, okay? So what I want you to do for, let's say, exercise 4A, right? I want you to play root third five and then leave a space, leave a rest. And then what we're going to do is we're going to fill in that rest and we're going to create these awesome walking bass lines using this formula. One, two, two, three, four. What we do now is we fill in the rest, okay? And we fill in the rest. So exercise A was root third fifth, okay? Exercise 4B is root 
third, fifth, and a chromatic note, chromatic, chromatic note, above or below the root that we're moving to, okay? So on the C minor, we would play C, E flat, G, okay, root third five, and then for this note here, this fourth note, we would play a chromatic note above or below F, which is the root that we move into. So this here, let's do chromatic note above for now, we'll call it a G flat, okay? C, it's a root, third, five, chromatic note above the F. Then for the F, we play the same thing, root, third, five, and for the fourth note here, we're gonna do a chromatic note above the B flat, which is obviously B. And then we'd follow that formula on. It's gonna sound like this, two, three, four. Okay, really fantastic way of just outlining those chords, quarter notes all the way through, engaging this, being able to play the roots, the roots fives, roots and thirds, root three, five, chromatic note equals awesome walking bass lines, right? Now, you can do, again, you can do a chromatic note above as well. So if we get rid of that G flat there and the B, C, E flat, G, the note above, I mean below, sorry, F is E, the note uh, below B flat is A. Now, I did say that there was five points, right? So the fifth point is that you can break this pattern, right? So a lot of bass players learn this pattern and then they try apply it to everything. It doesn't work for everything. Okay, so you're not gonna be able to play this root third five chromatic note on every single chord sequence, and you shouldn't do either because walking bass lines aren't about that. It's about, and all walking bass lines as well, if you did not know this, are improvised, okay? That's the thing, this. That is not a walking bass line, it's a, it's, it's confused a lot of the time. People think that's a walking bass line. Just because you're playing quarter notes doesn't mean it's a walking bass line. A walking bass line is improvised, okay? Now, break this pattern, how do you do that? Well, for the most part, you can actually play a walking bass line by just using chord tones, not even any chromatics. Using this chromatic is going to give you more of that like jazzy flavor, but you don't need to use it. And also you don't need to play them root third five either. You can play three root five, five, three, you can play them in any order, okay? The chord tones, that's your ingredients of your cake, you can throw them in in whatever order you want and you're gonna be fine, okay? Now let me give you an example of that. First of all, I'm just gonna play chord, in fact, I'm just gonna play chord tones in, in all random kinds of orders, right? Two, three, four. Okay, so this is just chord tones with no passing tones. Sounds cool, right?
This is the first stepping stone to understanding your neck. This is the first stepping stone to be able to solo. This is the first stepping stone to really be able to play cool funk lines. <laughs> You know, be able to play cool funk lines and be able to outline all of the information that you've got on your hands without playing the same old drudgery over and over and over again. So walking bass lines are super important. Hopefully that you've got a ton out of this lesson. Again, we have co-created this awesome walking bass line course with Ed Friedland from the Mavericks. I can't believe Ed's in the Mavericks. How cool is that? Um, but Ed Friedland, one of the most published bass authors and definitely the coolest bass teacher on the planet, is open to, for enrollment right now for the next few days. Click the link below to check it out. If it has closed, we'll make sure there's a wait list up so you can jump on that wait list and get notified next time we open it. Obviously, if you've not subscribed to the Scott's Bass Sessions YouTube channel, boom, 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 do so now and click your notifications on. And uh, other than that, take it easy. And as always, I'll see you in the shed.